Hey, what's up, everybody? DJ Sixsmith here. You're watching the sit-down. Andy Wilson here with us. Got a lot going on these days, man. What's going on? Well, most importantly, I'm making cartoons. Hmm. Yeah, and that's also, the most important out of everything in the world right now. Cartoons are being made. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm quarantining. Uh, I'm trying to survive this weird post-apocalyptic reality that we have. But far more important than that, I'm putting cartoons into the world. And that's making me pretty happy. <laughs> Well, we certainly need that levity. So how about Hello Ninja? I mean, it's gone from your mind to a book to the Netflix world. Like, what's been the craziest part of this whole ride for you? You know, I think the, well, it's, it's hard to locate like an individual crazy part because I've written big fat books. I've written a lot of novels. I've spent the last decade writing long novels, seeing them go around the world you know, all those things. It's having it be pretty successful, really enjoying it. And then my three-year-old, she's now 10. Uh, my my three-year-old asked me for a book for her. Mm. Uh, I had I had sold a picture book uh, into New York, into the New York publishing world years prior and was still waiting for it to actually get printed. So I decided, you know what, Let's, I'm just going to self-publish something real quick. So she can have it while she's three, you know. So I don't write her something, and then she gets it while she's eight. So we really sat down that night. We worked on Hello Ninja. I, I ran lines off of her to see what was super sticky, like what really caught her attention. But then we self-published it as a little board book. Uh, I I didn't have many expectations for it at all, other than this is for my daughter and she's happy, and. Uh, you know, it got picked by Starbucks as the pick of the week, and they gave it. They gave the iBook away nationwide, and that really just kind of launched that sucker. So we we started sending physical inventory into Targets, and it started really, really motoring. So we sold the property to Netflix for a show, and the backstory there was that I I didn't want to have to make it. Mm -hmm. I didn't really believe in it. Uh, my manager named Grace Letting. She was just, she was the believer where she was like, yeah, this can go, this can go. And I'd seen so many big projects in Hollywood just kind of evaporate. Mm -hmm. And I thought, really, my, bo my board book is going <laughs> to, like, I have, I have serious producers, really big producers on some of my novels. Mm -hmm. I'm watching how difficult that was. Um, so the idea that one of my, you know, my board book would just go, my self-published board book was, was kind of farcical. So I told her, yeah, do whatever you want. You know, like try to set it up. That's great. But just don't make me do anything. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I kept writing my novels. And then, you know, we went down to L.A. I, li I live in Idaho. And we my, my production partner and I flew down to, Idaho, uh, down to L.A. from Idaho for some other meetings. And a pitch was going on. I've been set with Netflix. And, you know, so we, we went to the pitch. And as the author of the book, I ended up pitching a vision that was, I wasn't expecting to pitch. Yeah, you know, I, was, I wasn't expecting, I, was, I was, really didn't have to think about it, I was just there. And they asked me like what the vision for the book was and for the property. Uh, and I, I told them it was Calvin and Hobbes with none of the cynicism. I wanted this, <laughs> I wanted like big color Sunday panel, wish fulfillment, you know, dreams coming true kind of a thing for little kids, but without that cynical downbeat that makes Calvin so funny to adults. So I was going to remove that jaded downbeat. Right. And I, they, they loved the idea. Uh, so I real quick went into brain surgery. That was a nice little mm. hiatus. Uh, I didn't tell them that was happening because nobody wants to know about that. No, you but, leave that uh, for the next meeting. You just save that for a second yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So I come out of brain surgery and Grace Letting, my manager, says, so they really want it, but they'd love to see a script. So I real quick wrote a script, sent it over. You know, I was Wait, still, how, I how long is this post brain, brain surgery? How long after? Not, not very. Wow. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty close. I want to say two weeks. Oh my gosh. Um, but I, I spent the first week learning to walk, um, like to walk again. Oh my gosh. And then, the next week, I was like, okay, it's time to write a preschool, you know, try to, I'd never done that before. I was a novelist. I'd written screenplays, but mm -hmm. not like preschool stuff. So I, I kicked something out. I, I don't want to look at it again because I don't know, like, I've got no real desire to revisit that script. 
but it uh, it closed the deal. It closed the deal for me, and we got a great a great order from them and got to work. And I've been working on it ever since. So I've done a heck of a lot. My initial deal was, don't make me do anything, Grace. And that that turned into I'm at the pitch meetings. I'm writing this pilot. You're literally scripts. doing everything. I'm in the I'm in the room. I'm in all the writers' rooms. I was yeah. It was it turned into a full on roller coaster that I loved being on. It was a blast, and the show has really rung the bell that I was aiming at from the very very beginning. You know, and my now ten year old loves it. I mean, my I have a bunch of kids. My teenagers love it. They all they all love to get together and just laugh at. The execution, the whimsy of these two, you know, these two pals uh, and their cat, you know, Georgie and Wesley and Pretzel. And then also the uh, really the big, the big, big wish fulfillment and the animation execution and the directing was executed at such a high level, a much higher level than I was uh, even optimistic for. So I was really wanting us to aim high. Mike Dowding did an amazing job directing. And it's just a blast to watch. It's so dynamic and funny and, you know, Looney Tunes slapstick meets Calvin and Hobbes mm. meets ninjas. I mean, it, it makes me smile every single time I'm watching an episode, even if I've seen it 35 times. <laughs> that is an unbelievable story. I mean, every single part of that one. So I, I totally understand that you're saying there, there isn't just one crazy part. So when you think about the fact that people all over the world are now seeing the show, it all started from you basically right. just want to be a cool dad. Like you just want to impress your daughter. <laughs> yeah, I'm a much cooler dad now. Um, <laughs> th thanks, thanks to Netflix. Mm. So it's, it's really weird to know that you're hitting 190 countries, mm. you know, day one. And that's just the, the way the industry's changed and the, the reach that Netflix has is so phenomenal. And such a privilege to be even you know on to have access to that kind of platform is amazing um it's phenomenal and i think my, my favorite part about it i really believe is the birthday parties mm -hmm. you know so the birthday parties when i see birthday parties around the world where it's ninja cakes it's hello ninja it's wesley <laughs> and georgie and pretzel and it, you know it thrills me because this is you know brazil or turkey or mm. you know wherever it might be and everywhere you go Kids want their best friends at their birthdays. You know, they want their they want their pals at their birthday party. And so to see like these little ninjas, uh, these little characters that got first uh, built at my dining room table with my three year old, like attending birthday parties worldwide, just you know makes me really happy. That's really insane, and it's just funny too because you spend so much time on these really important, serious works of art that you've done in the past in your <laughs> novels, right? And it's this throwaway yeah. thing. But it also goes to show that, like, you had that creativity in your mind. Like, yeah, it was random one night and all that. But, like, were you conscious of the fact that, like, you had this world kind of brewing in there as you got going with all this stuff? Yeah, I think there's, uh, there's ways in which I was absolutely conscious. So I was uh, – you broke up there for a second. But I'm gonna, I, got the, I think I got the important part of the question. I was I was very conscious of the world mm -hmm. like the, I wanted to write with you know little ninjas especially uh, this little ninja with this giant round head and a pot belly 